I'm trying to think if I would put that card into my goat control deck. Probably not. This card is worse than Exiled Force. But it's also not an Ashent card. I just now realized that. I was about... like, Thank you for letting me know that because I didn't realize. I thought this was uh, an Ashent card, but it's not. This is just a TCG, uh, like a world premiere card, right? But this is Ashen, right? This is a Vados. Okay, let's read the Vados. Uh, level 10 Dark Pyro Fusion Effect. Um, materials, Vados, the Eruption Dragon of Extinction, plus two level nine or lower pyro monsters. Cannot be destroyed by card effects. Also, your opponent cannot target it with card effects, uh, with monster effect. If this card is fusion summoned, you can destroy all spell and traps your opponent controls. When your opponent activates a card or effect on the field quick effect, you can send a face up Ashen card you control through the grave, destroy that card. You can only use this effect of Bados, the Dragon of Endless Darkness, once per turn. Okay. This card. Um this card is not good. But hear me out. Hear me out, guys. Hear me out. I I have some hope. I have some hope because the uh, I think what this card is all about is not that the effect is actually good. I think what this is going to be about is how you summon this, because as, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, we don't know what the Ashent fusion looks like, right? The spell. We don't we have no idea we didn't even know what the what the that the archetype had fusions right because in the first wave it had nothing to do with fusions right i think that the because because it specifically requires vados right and vados's entire thing is to summon vados on the opponent's field right there has to be a way. In my mind, it would be incredibly stupid if they don't make the fusion spell like able to fuse with your opponent's Vados or something like that, right? In which case, what you want to do with this is you want to like, you want to summon Vados to their field, right? Let me let me pull up Vados real quick. Vados. Vados, the eruption dragon of extinction. Hold up. During the main phase, if this card is in your hand, quick effect, you can target a card in a field zone, special summon this card to your opponent's field. If you do destroy that card, then you can add to your hand or set one Ashen continuous trap from your deck. If this card is sent from your opponent's field to the graveyard, destroy a monster on the field. So what they want you to do, surely, is you you, they, you give your opponent the Vados and then you fuse with that Vados, which blows up your opponent's entire field, right? Um, and then uh, this thing also destroys all spell and traps your opponent controls, right? So this destroys all monsters. This destroys all spell traps. There you go. You've wiped your opponent's entire board. Surely. The field spell makes your opponent's monsters pyro. Okay, hold up. Let me bring up Obsidim as well. Obsidim, the Ashen City. Face up special summon monster your opponent's controls become pyro during your turn. Yeah, there has to be. Literally, there has to be a way to, to summon this guy. Like the fusion spell needs to needs to do that. If they don't do that, if if that if that does not do that i i'm losing all all faith in in their card design like if it doesn't do that it it makes no sense at all no sense no shot the card you're looking for is called super polymerization i mean yes yes um but it would still be incredibly weird if they didn't include it in the archetype right because that is not a super poly is not part of the archetype you don't just design a new archetype like ashend and then make it only like make the fusion monster only good because of super poly synergy i don't know that i i think i think there needs to be a cool way to make this thing is what i'm trying to say like there needs to be a cool way of summoning this fusion monster and then it's fine because itself 
Like, you're never going to go through the motions of summoning this with, like, a regular as fusion summon, like, with your own cards. I'm not fusing away three monsters, including my own Vados, to make this guy. Because Brother in Christ just activate Harpy's Feather Duster. <laughs> that's, that's better. Like, that's not that does not require an investment of four cards. <laughs> I don't know exactly how you're going to be able to summon it, but we have to wait. We have to wait with our evaluation on this card uh, until like uh, until we see the fusion spell. Or maybe it's not even a fusion spell. Maybe it's just which whichever way they give them to fusion summon, right? Which I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't really hoping for this um, to be a fusion archetype because what this means is we get another wave of seven Ashened cards, right? And... I would have liked them to make more good main deck Ashend cards, uh, just because we need a high density of good Ashend cards to make the deck playable. The problem is now that we know that there's a fusion monster, we're probably, I mean, one of the seven cards is going to be the fusion monster. The other one of the seven cards is going to be some fusion spell or other fusion related thing. So we already have like two less cards that are just, that can just be starters or consistency cards or just good cards in general right because the fusion spell if this is your fusion monster i'm gonna be honest with you i'm predicting that the fusion spell is going to be able to fuse with your opponent's monsters but it's still going to be extremely gimmicky um like maybe you play like a one of or something like that but i don't think the fusion spell is going to be the greatest thing ever right uh and it's not going to change our lives so i don't know but like Copium, Ashend will be good. <laughs> like the U-Bell one? Yeah, maybe. But like for U-Bell, it makes more sense because Super Poly is actually part of the archetype. But I guess it does make sense because of how Vados works that they, they make it so... Um, they make... They give, they give the deck some ways to remove the opponent's Vados from the field, right? That Because then tr it triggers and all that. Right? That makes sense. You should watch Jesse's video on Ashend. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. If you guys want to, Jesse, I guess it it fits the it fits the topic, and we're kind of light on stuff to do today. Today, anyways. Okay, these cards are actually good. Okay. The Ashend cards are gorgeous. Konami clearly put a lot of effort into designing these cards in a very particular way with this Dark Souls type of style and with the lore and background of some sort of Pompeii-esque story and fitting that into the It is, it, it, I'm literally out of all the TCG exclusive archetypes that I've had copium for in the past, this one is probably the biggest one of like, I, I, I'll be so disappointed if they don't make these good because they look so dope. They look so dope and they look fun too, the first wave. You know? <laughs> Stop referring to sub months as pregnancy. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for the 10. The gameplay mechanics. It has all the makings of this fan favorite deck. However, they suck. And this is a problem <laughs> with a lot of the TCG exclusives we've been getting lately. They give us these archetypes with somewhat potential, really cool art and really cool background. And then they just make the deck almost non-functional. Mountain stuff. Wait, what? Oh my God. All of the war rocks only work when Earth Warriors battle. Oh my god, this deck is so bad! However, we've only gotten wave one of the Ashen, and there is hope for it yet. We'll be getting two waves of support for each TCG archetype. So with Ashen, we're sure to get I would argue I would argue Plunder turned out okay. I would argue that some of the archetypes, uh like I, I think even though TCG archetypes overall have been kind of disappointing and there's a lot of them that are disappointing i think some of them are kind of good enough right like plunder gold pride and all that kind of stuff they've been meta relevant tier two tier three kind of stuff that i think that's fine i i think those were okay another batch of cards however the last few batches of cards like e troopers and testinas second wave Dude, has been almost entirely like detached from the rest of the archetype but I'm hopeful. His Tina, they could have literally made um, seven vanillas and it would have had the same impact. 
and I want to kind of figure out what Ashen would need out of the second wave to actually be probably would have been better because then they had like unexpected die synergy. Oh. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Ashen cards, go check out my highlights channel. We can see my initial reaction to them over a month ago when they first got announced in Phantom Nightmare. From the get-go, you'd see that I found no playable viability for this deck. There were clear flaws. Then you can add your hand or set one Ashen continuous trap. Oh, ew. Why does it add a trap? However, I'd like to actually understand the deck <laughs> more properly. So the most important thing to do is see its game plan play out. So I'm going to invite my friend Asad over and we're going to have a Yu-Gi-Oh game night. And by the end of it, the goal is I'll understand the Ashen deck well enough to see what it's missing and what out of Legacy Destruction would make it viable for the WCQ format. First thing you got to do, we got to build this deck together. We got a bit of a template going. Got to get our TSX. Okay, so I think the uh, I think the the main issue with this, which is a an, an issue with um with TCG exclusive archetypes in general, is that legitimately I don't really believe that this deck is like actually a functioning strategy out of um Phantom Nightmare. Like it, it, it's I, I, it's baffling to me why they don't they release these decks in a state where they're not even playable yet. I don't know why they do that. It, it's not meant to be even fun. Yeah, but like, it's it, it's not meant to be functioning. is is mind blowing to me. Like, why isn't it right? But I mean, I guess they're they're gonna try it anyways. But I, I I that's why I always wait. I haven't played a single game of Ashen yet, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll be surprised by this. But I'm gonna be honest with you. I I think with TCG exclusive archetypes, for the most part, it's just like. You need to wait to see the full two waves to even make yourself, to even have a real opinion, right? Uh, because I don't have an opinion on Ashen yet. I don't think the cards are, I don't think the archetype is good. I don't think the archetype is bad. I simply don't know yet because we don't know the cards yet. X1 sleeves start sleeving it up. What's better than our good old fashioned TSX1 Supreme Pro sleeves? I'm not just shilling here. These sleeves are fantastic. But if you go to tsx1.com and use the code potato10, all right, 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 all if they made another one that kind of functions like Vados, because I think if you make the deck, um, if you give the deck multiple cards that could function as hand traps against field spells, that would be cool. Field spells. So I want all the field spell support, as well as I'm going to want ways to search pyro monsters. And the new rank four out of Age of Overlord, Infernal Flame Banshee, should give me good access to all my Ashen cards. It's time to duel. All right, so that was a night. Just announced? What do you mean just announced? Where? Night of dueling. That was a few hours of us just jamming games, me with just Ashen and Asad with a whole plethora of random decks. Some I don't know why he had built. And what a great friend. How the first match we played, he brings Cash Tira and I get shifted. Four out of five games. How lovely. Anyways, I feel like I learned plenty from this dueling. You know, theory can do a lot to help you understand how good a deck is, but without actually playing it, you can't see interactions, resource games, and all these things play out entirely accurate. So what are some of the things that I learned? So probably the biggest thing that stuck out to me was the deck felt kind of inconsistent. But at the same time, if you don't get to Obsidim, you'll also have nothing either. And it means a lot of games where you get ashed or impermed, or you just have a weird hand, you don't do any. There was a time where on first looked at my five card hand and yep, go. That's really all I could do. And I even almost won the game because I drew a terraforming for turn, but yeah, it doesn't always work out that easily. Game over. However, it did feel rather strong. Anytime I got to resolve a Vados and then do that whole setup, it was pretty good. Vados acted as a hand trap, uh, a combo enabler, and as follow up. And the theme is entirely central to that card resolve. Vados is phenomenal and they need to lean more into that. Yeah, I would honestly, I think they need to make uh, another card that I think they need to make that would be phenomenal is they need to make like a, uh, a quick effect, discard this card to add Vados to hand.
I think that's what they that's what they would need because that would like help the deck so much if you could play more copies of Vados essentially. But it's not it doesn't need to be like we don't need a we don't need a Rhoda spell. We need to have more copies of Vados when we go second already. Right? We need to be able to search that um we need to be able to search that Vados going second um immediately. I was uh, very impressed because I think how that is the is. um I you think know, that is the was the best uh, upside of the deck is that they can interact with field spells. Now, one of the things that I was worried about was Awakening of Vados was an obviously powerful card, but that Pyro Lock meant you couldn't really do any combos with it. But truthfully, if you did a combo anyway besides the Awakening of Vados, you actually could just use the generic extra deck tools pretty well. And Banshee is. An incredible card. The fact that it searches anything you want outside of the field spell, but also that you can SP it, banish the Banshee, and then bring it back. That's a play I did several times. It's also a fire that can then turn into Hita or Princess and go into other extract tools that way. There were times where you could end on multiple interruptions just using generical cards you'd use in a Snake Eye deck. And while they may be a little bland and take away from some of the identity of the Ashen cards, I feel like the Ashen cards still very much carry these game states. I was worried you'd have nothing and that these cards would be too restrictive so it's only really awakening of vados uh, and awakening of vados honestly you can just use better as a trap card uh, to trigger the destruction effect in your opponent's turn of vados you know something that i also didn't really expect to be so strong was the hero ashend that comboed with the, uh, the zombie you can special summon this card from your hand uh, during the main phase target a pyro on the field destroy it then if you destroy the vados yeah, I mean, that's just a pop, because on your turn, everything is um, is pyro, right? We ruled the esque effect of the field spell to turn your opponent's monsters into pyro's turn. Your turn only, unfortunately. To be able to pop cards, and to apply pressure in some of these awkward game states. It also just had really good stats and a better leveling. And while I expected the other Ashen monsters to be better, this one felt rather good. Now, obviously, Priestess being the Stratos to the deck, fantastic. But the last one, King of the Ashen City, actually felt really bad. Uh, I didn't really expect this one to underperform the way it did, but the condition of needing your opponent to have the Vados on field pretty much means you're already playing the game and could have special from the deck anything you want either way. So this free special summon really only serves to summon a Link Fodder or 1400 extra attack points, neither of which are really that impressive. Also, leading with this is just terrible, and you wouldn't have this in the field unless you resolved some of your combos or opened up the field spell anyways. It just, it, King was not good, uh, and I played... It's funny how in the background... He's literally just doing Promethean Princess, Hita, Dark, SP, Zalantis combos. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. I mean, I guess that is what you need to do to make a half-finished archetype like that work, you know? Two of them, but I probably would not continue I mean, to do so. Uh, I also what, found... What do you expect, right? What do you expect? How are you going to make seven cards work? Like, it's seven cards. That doesn't make a deck. Even if you play three of each, that barely makes half a deck, and obviously you don't want to play every card as a three of even and to begin with. I found it rather integral to breaking fields that I had a way to the fields of Obsidium. Because if I didn't, then I really lost to any disruption. As you can see, I would just summon something and interrupt once. That's it. But when I had the field spell, I felt like, at least in this current meta, there weren't great ways of stopping me, and I could usually bridge away to get through my combo which is kind of nice and then with the field spell i could just summon monsters now what i took for granted is the ashen cards don't activate so special summoning them you can go into some pretty cool lines and i got to connect to zeus through a fenrir that was really powerful and i had this this random unique synergy that because it got shifted my banshee got banished and so did my obsidian now, obsidian says when it's banished or destroyed I imagine the Banish Clause is in there protected from Cosmic Cyclone, however, it doesn't say when it's sent to the grave. So if I just used it away under normal circumstances, I would have got nothing. And you know, even though it didn't happen too often, there were many times where I would look at my hand, and I had access to a Banshee because I drew Aratama, or I had Bonfire and that's about it. And if they just have a way to choke me on the ring four to stop me there, I'm not going to be able to set up any sort of field. Not only that, but sometimes Aratama alone just didn't do anything. There's, there's not one card combos in this deck, you have to pair stuff together, so it can be kind of awkward. Not every combination does something good, because say you had Vados plus Aratama, well, what does Banshee search you? If you get the Agnimal, you can make Little Knight. That's pretty much all it is. <laughs> Little Knight. I'm liking the bit of anti-synergy there, but I feel like you need that rank 4 engine because without Banshee, you can't access Vados enough at the time. So I don't love that it kind of didn't 
mesh fully how I'd want. That being said, we played a bunch of games and I think I was up overall the night. And I think some of that is because I had a good matchup versus Cash Tira. Vados into Cash Tira if they have to play Field Spell is really funny. One of the games, I just bricked them entirely. The deck wasn't terrible. And when I got the engine going, the engine was solid. It, it developed some interrupts. It developed a bit of pressure. You know, it wasn't always super easy to kill. And sometimes I had to leave my opponent alive. You didn't have too many restrictions. So you still could access some powerful extra deck monsters. You know, I could combo into Zeus. I also felt like I had solid disruption. I could fit hand traps in and Vados when paired with other stuff could act as a pretty good hand trap. So with that in mind, how do we fix that now? How do we say with the new support from Legacy of Destruction, what is needed for it to be good? So I think the biggest thing I am looking for is just another bomb. Vados and Obsidian feel really good, and so does Awakening, but these cards aren't fully searchable at all times. It's not a great way to mesh it all together. I would like one of the card that's like Awakening of Vados or a Vados or another field spell that does something somewhat proactive, because for one, it means you can't get choked super easily with hand traps, because if you get stopped at an early point, they'll snuff you out. You just can't do anything. And there's no other lines like Unchained where you can go non-linear combos to start progressing the game. It's not really possible. This what deck. is that? And another bomb would give you another option, another path to take when the first one gets stopped, while also increasing consistency and power. I also ran into a problem where once or twice I couldn't cycle cards the best, Big problem was prosperity and consistency issue, but I'm forced to play prosperity in these pot cards, and then I couldn't use Obsidian's bonus effect to draw a card, and it also hurt my resource game. Uh, that kind of left me in a bit of a weird spot uh, once or twice where I ran out of field spells and I almost couldn't do anything. Now, that trade off was worth it most of the time, but if I didn't have to make that trade off because my deck was more consistent, that would also be fantastic. I think I'd also like some more names for the deck. Now, especially if I'm getting a second field spell that counts as Obsidian while in play. And some more names to make rank fours a bit easier or make better extra deck monsters without playing stuff like Arth. I think that's not that's not super unlikely that they give you another thing that counts as Obsidim. Because they did remember they did the same thing with um with Horus, right? Where the entire deck was super focused on having the uh the King Sarcophagus, and so they gave him a field spell that says I count as King Sarcophagus. Uh, so I think uh, I think that could be that could be something they could do. Like maybe they make a continuous spell that is solid, but also counts as obsidim. I could see that. Tama, or just like a, a continuous spell that gives you like when you activate this card, you can activate obsidim or something like that. I had say another level four to combo with priestess. Uh, then you could go ashen priestess like the into fire that king one, sanctuary and then turn that into banshee. And, you know, set up some sp plays there and, and do some link up plays. And if that new level four, you know, also does something proactive, like Vados, for example. They give you an undestroyed city. Dude, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be kind of funny if, if they made, like, because Obsidim is like the destroyed city, right? And they just make like a, a fresh version, quote, quote unquote, like a, a, the, the, or like not fresh, but like a non-destroyed city. And then that one turns into the destroyed city if you do something. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? You have to like, I, I don't know what you have to do, but like, it, like I don't know, if this card gets destroyed or something, then you can tutor out the other one or something like that. I don't know. Maybe lock it just into Vado. So you have to deem to the near it, mint city. Fantastic. Yes. The other thing I'd like to fix is to add some sort of recycling into this deck. If you have a way to put back your high level Ashen monsters and maybe a bit of an upside like draw card as well, part of Avarice esque effect, that'd be fantastic. Now this card would need to be searchable. Otherwise it'd be probably pointless. But the problem is, I feel like if you don't play multiple of these high-level Ashen monsters, they'll gas out relatively quickly, and that's a problem because your deck also doesn't apply that much pressure that fast either. And that's a problem because you have to do one or the other. If you're not going to resource them, you're going to have to kill them fast. So instead, you're going for this disruption route and this resource route, so you have to play a little more of these high-level Ashen Hero and the King. And I think King, you absolutely can put to one either way, but Hero, you definitely need two of these in this deck. And that's a card that really feels terrible by itself. And even if you have Obsidian with it, it doesn't do that much if i could ideally just have the one why does the uh why does obsidian only change your opponent's types on your turn i guess they didn't want it to be a floodgate which i guess is good i kind of i kind of like that that it doesn't function as a floodgate but it does really make the hero a lot worse it'd be nice if the hero was a disruption on the opponent's turn use it and then when it's thrown away just get another one on the next turn with some sort of cycling effect 
Yeah, also, no, I get it. I, I get it. Yeah, but then maybe they should have made the hero a little bit better. They could have just... The hero could have just said, if you control Obsidim, quick effect, target a monster on the field, destroy it, or something like that. Right? Your trap card, Ashen for Eternity, it only adds back when it's activated. So it's not like super, super flexible. And talking about Ashen for Eternity, that card is actually really good. I was thinking at first... Here's yeah. a shitty ass trap. Then you need another Ashen <laughs> trap card uh, to give you some actual disruption or some better resource flow. But I really like the Ashen for Eternity. It really felt good with the deck. I don't think they need more trap cards. This is a one of. No, please, for God's sake, don't give them more trap cards. This card is not that. This card is not as bad as you might think, and I do, I do quite like it. I still hate the fact that you have to play one of trap that you don't want to draw engine requirement kind of stuff. I don't like that um the card is still good and you're probably gonna play it but please not more traps please felt nice because it turned the vados into follow up another plus uh, and meant you had a bit more of a resource game and it also meant you had some disruption with it uh stealing the vados obviously isn't fantastic but it was weird when they had like talents or they had monster born or a charmer you could steal your monster back uh that was actually like not terrible because it cut off some lines they had to try break your field and break through your disruption. I, I thought the deck maybe would have needed an extra card, maybe needed a trap, but the deck may be rogue viable without those things. And it really just another bomb, another way to apply pressure, another fuel spell, maybe. Dude, I, I had I low-key had some hope that uh on that that Ashen could be a deck that functions without like accessing your extra deck over and over and over. Like I kind of wanted this deck to be a deck that doesn't uh yeah it's been a while since we've had a deck that actually doesn't focus on spamming extra deck monsters right and i find it hard to imagine for a deck to not do that but like yeah blue yeah i mean blue blue kind of does does count voices voice is close yeah voices voice labyrinth uh banker soul is kind of close that's not, it's actually not true yeah now what i say i take it back there's been a couple of examples yeah yeah That's what I'm looking for to make this deck viable. I'm very hopeful that Konami does give us something valuable in this next set because this trend of Testina or whatever, where it had a bunch of these cool cards with promise and then just flopped, it's depressing. And I really hope this Ashen deck turns out to be good because I had fun playing it today and it's a super cool playstyle. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think that the suggestions I made for Ashen would fix it? Or am I overestimating the power of Ashen and maybe it needs more than what I said? Maybe it does need an extra card. All right. That was well, that was well made. I like that. That was cool.